Biden approves a massive drilling project in Alaska. Gretchen Whitmer admits she screwed up Michigan lockdowns. And Ron DeSantis wants to make it easier for politicians to sue journalists. That and more on this week's headlines. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell suffered a concussion and rib fracture after a fall last week. An advisor to McConnell said the senator is already eager to return to work. Several of McConnell's Republican colleagues believe he's going to be fine. However, no timetable has been given on when he might return, and it's hard to tell given his age, and the fact that after falling down, turtles have a hard time getting up off their backs. Speaking of old politicians that have a hard time setting things right, Joe Biden. If you haven't heard, the second and third largest bank failures in U.S. history occurred within 48 hours of each other last week. I covered that in depth on Thursday. Link to that video is below. Despite this, President Biden assured the U.S. that it can have confidence in U.S. banks and that they're safe. Assuring people something is safe and to have confidence in it after Two collapsed? Is it just me or does Biden sound less like a president and more like a carnival barker trying to convince guests to ride the Ferris wheel? Sure, it crashed and burned a couple of times, but what are the odds it's going to happen a third time this week? Come on, take a chance. Biden vowed to hold those behind the Silicon Valley bank collapse responsible. He said, I am firmly committed to holding those responsible for this mess fully accountable and to continuing our efforts to strengthen oversight and regulation of larger banks so that we are not in this position again. And he knows just who to blame. Donald Trump. Are we sure Biden didn't also suffer a concussion recently? Him blaming Trump is as predictably ridiculous as it would be if Republicans tried blaming this on woke policies. Oh wait, they did. I know politics these days is all about finger pointing and passing the blame, but can they at least blame something surprising for a change? Blame this on the irresponsible investments of Scrooge McDuck. Why not? It's just as plausible I knew the gold was fake because real gold is too heavy to swim in. Now. As for Trump, rolling back regulations may or may not have helped contribute to these banks collapsing. In fact, like I covered for Silicon Valley Bank, it probably wouldn't have made a difference, since the bank would still have met those regulation requirements, even though they didn't have to. Plus, the regulations were rolled back with a bipartisan vote in Congress, so it wasn't just Trump. But also, Trump's been out of office for more than two years. Yet Biden still blames Trump for everything that goes wrong under his watch. Economy tanking? Trump's fault. Border crisis? Trump's fault. Everyone accusing Angela Bassett of throwing shade at Jamie Lee Curtis when she beat her for Best Supporting Actress at the Oscars? Trump! I'm obviously joking. Biden would never acknowledge there's a border crisis. One thing that any president would do, however, is break a campaign promise. The Biden administration has approved a 30-year oil drilling project in Alaska. This upset environmentalists and several of Biden's fellow Democrats, as he promised while campaigning that there would be no more drilling on federal lands. I don't mean to victim blame, but if you're still surprised that Joe Biden is breaking a campaign promise at this point, that's kind of on you. This was like being surprised when Romeo and Juliet die at the end of the play. How did you not expect this? Oh, is it because you believed Biden when he promised they would live happily ever after? It's easy to see why President Biden approved this, though. This oil drilling plan, known as the Willow Project, is expected to provide hundreds of millions of barrels of oil. It could also help the local Alaska economy. The president of the Alaska Federation of Natives said the Willow Project could jumpstart our economy with thousands of jobs and be a model in community and environmental stewardship for future opportunities. This could also help the nation's economy as a whole. Gas prices are still sky high and rising. And due to Biden dipping into the nation's emergency oil stockpiles, they're now at their lowest levels in 40 years. So to be fair to Biden, while he is breaking a campaign promise, it's easy to see why he's doing this. There's not much else he could do. If you asked Biden, he'd say his hands were tied. 
They were tied by Donald Trump. It's Trump's fault. More after the break. Welcome back. U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg sent Congress draft legislation that would require airlines to allow families with children under the age of 13 to sit together without additional fees if seats are available. Yes, some airlines actually charge you extra if you want to sit next to your toddler. If it surprises you that airlines would charge extra for something, well, I don't mean to victim blame, but that's kind of on you at this point. I'm pretty sure being surprised by something the airlines do is also an extra charge. Buttigieg wrote, the U.S. Department of Transportation remains concerned that airlines' policies do not guarantee adjacent seats for young children traveling with a family member, and that airlines do not guarantee the adjacent seating at no additional cost. This is a good move. Families shouldn't have to spend more money just to be able to sit with their young children. I also think other passengers shouldn't have to spend more to guarantee they don't sit next to your young children. I'd even be willing to travel in the cargo hold. It has less oxygen? Good. That means I might actually be able to get a decent sleep on a flight for once. A levee on a river in central California broke during a rainstorm, causing massive flooding and thousands of evacuations. And California was hit with even more rain after this, leading to flood warnings for tens of millions of residents from Los Angeles to San Francisco. The Californians aren't used to this level of rain, and their infrastructure isn't exactly equipped for it. While this was challenging, there are two positives that came out of it. One, some experts are saying this put an end to California's historic drought. And two, the streets of San Francisco haven't been this clean in decades. Quick, someone take a picture before it's covered in human excrement again. President Biden issued an executive order that will increase the number of background checks required before someone is allowed to buy a firearm. It will also attempt to stop gun sellers without a license or those who've had their licenses revoked from conducting business. This follows a bipartisan gun safety bill Biden signed into law last summer. It closed loopholes and gave states funding to enforce red flag laws. In response to this, violent criminals thought, wow, so it's going to be harder for me to get a gun? Well, I guess I'll give up and go to law school. Lawyers make great criminals anyway. Speaking of people changing their tune, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer admitted during an interview with CNN that her restrictive COVID lockdown policies may have gone too far. We you know, had to make some decisions that, in retrospect, don't make a lot of sense, right? Um, if you went into the hardware store, you could go into the hardware store, but we, we didn't want people, you know, all congregating around the gardening supplies. People said, oh, she's outlawed seeds. It was February in Michigan. No one was planting anyway. But um, that being said, you know, some of those policies, I look back and think, you know, that what maybe was, was, a little, was a little more than we needed to do. Honestly, it's refreshing to see someone admit they were wrong. We should encourage that. But that's usually when they were wrong about what time the movie started or how tall Tom Cruise is. He's only 5'7", by the way. But not, whoops, guess I didn't need to completely ruin all your livelihoods. My B, wanna grab an ice cream? My treat, on account of you not being able to afford it, what with me completely ruining your livelihoods and all. Okay, sorry, bye. And after the break, a federal judge strikes down Biden's catch and release border policy. Welcome back. A federal judge ruled in favor of Florida Attorney General Ashley Moody, who sued the Biden administration over their policy of releasing immigrants into the U.S. instead of keeping them detained until they complete their immigration proceedings. In his ruling, the judge ordered an end to this policy and wrote, the evidence establishes that defendants have effectively turned the southwest border into a meaningless line in the sand and little more than a speed bump for aliens flooding into the country. This policy, often called catch and release, is highly controversial and has led to countless illegal immigrants entering the country and overwhelming not only border towns, but also sanctuary cities like New York, which is wild considering how New York City is known for taking in immigrants. They're going to need to change the inscription on the Statue of Liberty to give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses. Okay, not that many. Those masses are a little too huddled. Maybe try San Francisco. I hear the streets are actually clean for once. Speaking of Florida, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and his administration are proposing making it harder for reporters to gain access to records 
and making it easier to sue journalists for defamation. First, let's talk about public records in Florida. Florida has something known as sunshine laws, which gives easy access to records from government meetings and even arrests. That's actually the reason there are so many Florida man stories in the news. It's not that Florida is more crazy, they just don't hide it like other states. Florida is like the dating profile of a woman in her 50s. You ever see one of those? They don't mess around. They don't start with, hi, they start with, here's the deal. DeSantis has claimed executive privilege and sealed what might have otherwise been public records. This was contested, but a judge ruled he had the right to do this. Critics have argued this would lead to a less open government and would be used by those in power to hide nefarious actions. In DeSantis' specific case, he wanted to hide the names of certain people who were providing him legal advice, so he can freely receive advice and consider all alternatives without fear of these consultations receiving public scrutiny. The president of the First Amendment Foundation, a nonprofit advocacy group that supports more transparency in Florida government, said, this administration doesn't want to put negative information out there. If there's good news, we'll share it, and if there's bad news, we'll hold on to it for a while until we're pushed and shoved to release it. And pushing and shoving the administration to release that bad news might soon be harder to do, because DeSantis also proposed making it easier to sue journalists for defamation. The 1964 Supreme Court case, New York Times v. Sullivan, protected journalists against defamation suits from elected officials, citing the First Amendment. The only way elected officials could sue journalists is if they could prove they acted with actual malice and knowingly published something that was false or not caring if it was false, which is hard to do. You can tell it's hard considering that Fox, CNN, and MSNBC aren't sued constantly. These biased networks screw up stories so frequently, we did an entire episode on it. But it's hard to prove they screwed it up intentionally. They might just be incompetent. So that's better, I guess. A proposed bill in the Florida Senate would remove the need to prove actual malice. One way it does this is by assuming that statements made by anonymous sources are false. Which, to be fair, isn't a bad rule of thumb. I heard from a guy who heard from a guy isn't reporting that's playing telephone. You probably shouldn't take anything too seriously that sounds like it should end with a purple monkey dishwasher. However, this bill would force journalists being sued to hand over information on their reporting, including their anonymous sources. Critics say this would be used to intimidate reporters into silence, but DeSantis defended this move, saying it would protect those with less power from being falsely attacked by massive media organizations. A guy like me, I have a platform, I'm fine, but there's a lot of other people, uh, I think, who, um, uh, who get maligned unfairly and then really don't have the adequate recourse, which I think would, would, would be good. And you know what? It would contribute to an increase in the ethics and the media and everything if they knew, you know what? You smear somebody, you know, it's false, and you didn't do your homework, you know, you're going to have to be held accountable for that. He also clarified that this bill wouldn't allow the government to regulate what the media can and can't say. It would just make it easier for citizens, even those acting as elected officials, to sue journalists as individuals. Because that's exactly what America needs, more lawsuits. I can see both sides of this argument. On the one hand, holding reporters accountable is a good thing. On the other, giving the government a tool, allowing them to go after their detractors, and forcing them to out their sources is super shady. And this isn't even the craziest law being proposed in Florida. Which is saying something, since there's probably a law being proposed in Florida right now that would make it mandatory to arm wrestle a manatee to be eligible to vote. Jason Broder, a Republican member of the Florida State Senate, proposed a bill that would require bloggers to register with the state if they're paid to write about elected officials. Several Republicans, including DeSantis, opposed this bill. Former Republican Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich criticized it, saying, The idea that bloggers criticizing a politician should register with the government is insane. It is an embarrassment that it is a Republican state legislator in Florida who introduced a bill to that effect. He should withdraw it immediately. There's a thin line between holding people accountable and censoring your critics. If these libel laws are changed, who knows what could happen? You know, besides Trump suing Biden for saying everything is his fault. 
So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Leave your comments below. And if you want to help us deliver nonpartisan news, be sure to support America Uncovered by going to patreon.com slash America Uncovered. All it takes is as little as a dollar or more per episode to fight YouTube censorship and demonetization. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.